All right, get our check balls out here. They're all quarter inch, with the exception of the large one. And it's 312. It goes down here. Quarter inch, quarter inch, uh, come on. quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and one right there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the early ones had a check ball up here. It was eliminated. I don't recall if I've ever seen one there or not. We got our uh, springs for our check valves. The long check valve goes up right here. And the short one goes right here. All right, there's two different valve body gaskets. The only difference between them is this little slot right here. And I have tried to determine my entire career which one takes what. After 89, <clears throat> they came with the spring that you're supposed to replace in here. I've tried to find the dimensions. I don't, I, I have yet to find it. I measured the dimensions on this one. Um, I'll put it at the end of the video. I don't remember what it was right at the top of my head. This gasket, or it did have this gasket, light gasket on here. Uh, from what I can find, this is the early valve body. So as long as you can put that spring in any of them and then use this gasket. They say not to use this gasket unless you have that updated spring in it. And don't put this gasket on it if you have the updated spring. So, but they don't tell you how to determine if you got the updated spring or not, which makes no sense to me and our separator plate and I forgot I got to check the holes and see if they've been drilled so I'll be back okay <clears throat> I talked to the folks at uh, Transgo about this kit and they said it's an ancient kit they don't even make it anymore and uh, it's totally what they do now is totally different than what this kit was and I asked them about this gasket I asked ATSG also about how to determine which one took what. Uh, ATSG didn't really have an answer about it, uh, about how to determine what spring determined. I did have a, a bulletin that I ran across that said that if you put this slotted gasket on the early units, you, you, you could put the spring kit in any of them to correct that throttle buzz that they had. And that's what this gasket was for, is if you put that kit in, or on the later valve bodies, I think it's 80, 89, I think is when they came out with it. 87, 88, 89, somewhere in there. And this is the gasket that you would use after that. I always just looked at the gasket. If you was lucky, and nobody ever been into the unit. You just looked at the gasket you had and that's what you stuck on it. Never knew how to tell which one took it and which one didn't. Never could find the tech on it. Still can't. ATSG still can't answer that question for me. Uh, the people at uh, Transgo said they recommended you put this on all of them. The bulletin says if you put this on the ones that don't take it, says you run the risk of burning the, the clutches up. If you put the gasket the other way, um, you have throttle pressure issues if you put the early gasket on the late ones. Um, Transgo says to stick it on all. This is an early 82 valve body. Um, supposed to have the early gasket it had the late gasket on it I'm gonna run it with a late gasket and we're gonna see what happens so this is the gasket that we're gonna use and I went ahead and flat sanded my plate the uh, 
uh, actually I need to I'll take a picture of this. I have a hell of a mess going on here right now. I got five units with one part missing out of everything. And it's creating a damn nightmare. Um, the little notch faces this way. On this one. The notch goes down here on that one. goes over here on this one. Oops. Yeah, that up goes up here. Ten millimeters on these bolts. Eight millimeter on this one. Yeah, I have a lineup bolt here. I think I'm probably getting pretty close to the battery crapping out so I'll change it out before we go on to the rebuild Oop. and I'm cross threaded there we go gasket was the same for all of them so let me change out the battery and we'll go on to the rebuild all right AOD we're going to put a LS kit filter band pump bushing case bushing um, fix the shift kit broken spring that was in it this uh, lip faces down. This little check ball in here needs to be free. Uh, I don't remember what all else. Uh, spiral snap ring to keep these uh, shaft up from eating these splines further. You either need to do that or replace the drum. It's always a wise idea to go ahead and put that uh, spiral ring on there anyway or upgrade it to the solid shaft so you don't have to worry about that no more the lip's going to face down on the inner uh, ceiling ring I mean ceiling ring lip seal get you a scribe with the hook and get up underneath the lip and make sure it's not rolled on these early drums that cast iron ones it's uh, better to have the tools for putting the uh, seals in you don't really need the inner one on this one this is what happens when you loan them out and somebody uses other than mineral spirits to clean them loop that up nice and good you can get it in there usually without uh, the tools, but it, you're going to have a hell of a time and you're going to run a real high risk of cutting the lip seal. All right. 
All right, our return spring for this. A little spring sit on the little feet. Short end of the taper up towards us. I'm gonna go ahead and do all the drums at one time. Actually, there's only two on this one, so. The other one has a uh, snap ring that holds it in, so we don't have to worry about that. And the lip faces up towards us. And this lip faces up towards us. Now this one here, you're probably going to want to use the inner one. in search of huh it's out there it's out there on top of that cabinet that one goes to that one over there sometimes it takes a couple tries these uh, drums are Really a lot more difficult than the stamp steel ones. Being difficult. You may have to stick this in a different type of seal and cramp clamps down on the seal here and uh, pushes it in. I might have to put it in a freezer. It keeps being difficult like this. Okay, we've got the return spring, our retainer, short end of the taper up towards us again. You look on the tips of your snap ring, see how it's got a taper to it. We want that end right there up. And we want the opening 
in between those right there, somewhere like over in there. Alright, so what we have here is a hodgepodge tranny. It's not really a 93. I mean, the case is, the guts aren't, the valve body's not. Uh, we got a cushion plate. The steels and the clutches are all the same for the forwards and the reverse. So steel and the clutch alternation up to the top. And there's a four and a five clutch. And why they put a four clutch in here, I don't know. I mean, if you're going to go through the trouble of putting a shift kit in and everything, um, thinner snap ring goes on the forward drum. I believe it was a thinner one. I have to remeasure that. Uh, find that reverse here. Yeah. So, I uh, don't know why they didn't just upgrade everything. I could even put a 470W planet set in it. And, uh, been much better off than even put a put the bearing style drum in the reverse so some of the things we can do I just don't understand all right we've got this washer that goes on here this bearing this hub went in here changed the clutches up and put this thinner pressure plate they had seven clutches how they got seven I don't know because I tried and I couldn't get it and it doesn't come out right so I'm gonna go back to the factory style pressure plate and uh, start with the steel and alternate clutches up to the top and originally took uh, five or six So we're going to, I think this one only holds five now. I haven't been counting, so I don't know. steel, I mean our steel, our snap ring, alright, too much, so how did I have this a minute ago, I just love it when people's been in this stuff and they go and they screw it all up. Then you gotta try to fix everything. Let's try their thick pressure plate on the bottom. Okay, that's going to be pretty good right there. So how many we got in there? One, two, three, four, five. That's good enough. So we're going to use their thin pressure plate. And five clutches.
Okay. Um, need our bearing. I got this bearing here. It was on the back. In your kit for these ceiling rings that go back here. If you happen to come across a kit that doesn't have the nickel plated ceiling rings that are here, do not put those on. Hunch you up some of the nickel plated ones. nickel plated The ones that go on the shaft right here are scarf cut. And they go together just like that, not like that, just like that. If you need to put grease in there to hold these in place, by all means do it. thin snap ring that goes back here. Don't tump this over. All your stuff will fall out. Alright. Let's see if we can do our direct drum now. Now you got three and four clutch in here. Check ball in there. Make sure it's rattling. These are super easy to cut because they're flat. And especially on these uh, cast iron drums, it's very easy to cut them, even with the tools. This one here, if you do not have the tools, probably what you're going to want to do is get you a hose clamp grease up your your seals really good get you a hose clamp out here the inner one you're not going to cut i mean you, you can cut it easy but not near as easy as the outside you can probably work around the inner one it's not that big of a deal the outer one's going to be a real problem put you a uh, hose clamp on it stick it in the freezer and you might want to leave it in there quite a while and let me see if I got the inner one yeah, it looks like the inner one has walked off so we're gonna have to see if we can get this in there
Alright. You have this little ring that goes in there, it's split. You want the opening of that ring to be inside of here. You don't want it over underneath this. You got this really wavy snap ring. It goes down next. Make sure it's all the way up into that groove. This pressure plate goes in first, this side down. Alright, there's a bearing style and a washer style. This is the washer style, got the tabs. This is our washer. Put the drum on top here. Somebody's already put the spiral snap ring. You can get that from Superior. On our planet. You can get a low spread and I think we'll get it. Alright, you see how the there's an angle to that right there. There's a little tabs right here. Those face just like that. You would think that you can't put this in backwards, but I've seen some people do it. And our center support goes on top. Going to be turning counterclockwise and locking clockwise. Okay. Uh, get our rest of our uh, gear train ready. We got our sun gear. We got this bearing. We got our sun shell that sit on top. We got another bearing that looked just like that other one. It goes with the lip down. Our hub. And this bearing sits on top. Alright, on our pump. If you look on this uh, bushing. You can see where the seam is where it's put together. You never want that where you're going to stake it. And usually this relief right here is pointing down at the bottom right here. And this goes in this way. The book don't say anything about it, but every one I've ever seen has been that way. Okay, and let me go press my seal in before I forget. Outer gear goes with the dot up. It doesn't really matter about the outer gear. What really matters is about this inner gear. There's a bevel to it right here that faces towards the torque converter.
and have our feed ports here and line up. They only line up one way, so it's not that big of a deal. Ten millimeters. Make a special tool for this one also. It's really not needed on this. Alright, lips are gonna face up towards us. And the lips are gonna face up towards us on this one. don't use the tool on this one. We'll see how it works. Sometimes it's more of a hassle than it is just stick the thing in there. Alright, there's a bleed hole right there. Book says over here about the 132 o'clock position. I've always just put it right there in that hole. Just uh, stick it in my normal way. This is really more hassle than it is worth. It is not that difficult to get this one in there. This is what I use for my lip seals. It's a snap-on uh, drawer slide tool. tabs right here and make sure those are bent back in. Ok, 
keeps that on there. We have our pump washer. They are numbered. Usually they are this uh, natural color or kind of a yellow. We're going to put this one on there. We may be swapping it out. There's like five different ones. This is our factory, one that came in the car, it's a B, takes an O-ring there, takes two flat O-rings here, goes in there, and our return spring on top, we're putting in a super servo, it's an A+, plus. it has this flat rubber that goes here that's kind of actually a d-shaped rubber and our return spring it's got two as those flat lathe cut seals here Let's see how much bigger it is Accumulator. Like I said, this one uh, shouldn't have this, but it does. So we'll be putting this in. There's a scarf cut ceiling ring right here. And it goes together just like the others. You need to put grease on here, put grease on here. And our flat cut seal on there. It's got this spring cover. And snap ring. We have this accumulator uh, transgo kit comes with this d-shaped rubber ring that goes here I tried to find one I can't find I used to have lots of them it has this uh, ceiling ring that goes on the back back here we used to before they come out with all this stuff we'd had a torque flight speedometer o-ring we put on the top side right here and then torque flight 8 um, the forward accumulator, I mean servo, that little piston that goes down inside of there, we would use that uh, O-ring on here. And it sealed up really nice. I can't find any. I used to have a bunch of them. I ain't, don't have one. So we shall just go with the scarf cut ring on the inside here. And it has a uh, spring that goes on top, this cover, and snap ring here. The Transgo kit has us putting a spring here and here. So that's going to be fun getting that in. Um, our snap ring for our overdrive. This is our snap ring for our reverse cover and our piston. There's uh, different lengths according to how many grooves are here. There's a spring that goes on here. Uh, I guess that's it. I'm going to change camera angles, change the battery. 
and uh, we'll start putting this in the case. Okay, something's about to run out. I don't know what it is. Hopefully it's not the memory card. Uh, <coughs> this is the way i always done my bushings. There's a, <coughs> one of my subscribers has a video out about making a tool to get these out with a extension. I watched it. It's pretty interesting. I just haven't done it yet. This is the way I've always done it and I just haven't had the time to do anything right now. I've tried to find the opening of the bushing and uh, apparently it wasn't right there where I thought it was. This camera's really kind of right in the way. And usually when you start bringing it out, it'll kind of show you where the opening is at. And I still don't see it. And if I don't find the opening, I just get it to where I can get it out. And got a long bushing driver handle. Get a bushing driver that's bigger than the bushing. Try to start it as straight as you can. Try not hit the camera. and find one that uh, fits inside the bushing. Mine happens to be a number 46. And we'll just a little bit past flush. All right, then we want this bearing. Output shaft assembly. If when you get your planets set up in there, it's too tight, just uh, let's see if we can get this on camera. Smack your output shaft, get your uh, rubber mallet, kind of sp smack it every which way, a little bit harder than that. And usually it frees it right up. Alright, we got this flat snampering. Sits on that little ledge right there. band sits on top we want the anchor here to be right here just apply side down make sure it's sitting to where the anchors are on there planet assembly this has to 
go right through there. I'm gonna have to lean this back because the camera's right in my way. anti-clunk spring I think it's tech pack fits all makes one that uh, you cut a notch in here and it's supposed to help keep it from cutting into the case this is your factory one they and when they went to the 470 W they recommended that you put the late style one in to me they, they all are just as bad as each other I don't bother to replace them You want to put that down past where the snap ring goes. We got our bends are up. We're going to go here and here. Sun gear with the bearing. Our sun shell with the bearing. Our hub with the bearing. And our input shaft. Put the spiral snap ring on there. A lot of times it comes when the shaft is like this, where there's not a groove cut into it. Some of them have a groove that's a little bit deeper. If there, you have one that is like this, just get you a cutoff wheel and grind you a little spot for the, the uh, snap ring to go into. You're gonna have to put this in now because it will not come out like it would before. Put our forward and reverse drum assemblies in. Put our band in, it doesn't matter which way. The anchor needs to go there. Okay. if I've ever used my tool on a regular AOD because I made it after so we're gonna find out if it'll fit like it'll work so this is a 350 700 a low reverse uh, tool you can get it from uh, ATEC trans tool uh, you can get it off the snap-on truck I don't remember where else you can get it from but anyway I took that and I modified it. We'll talk about that in just a second here. 
Make sure your band is sitting up on the uh, rod there. I can't never remember the measurement, so I'll have to measure it for you. So the, the deal comes with this kind of mushroom Donda here. This piece is kind of mushroom on. I just ground that off. Drilled it, tapped it, put a washer and a bolt to hold that on there. there. Doesn't matter what you tap it, just as long as you can. I use that to push against. I use that to hold that on there when I need to use it for what it's intended for. These are quarter inch holes. I drilled one 355 thousandths from the edge there. And this one is 697 thousandths from that side. Okay. We got our intermediate pressure plate. This side goes down. And then our clutches. Steels. The top steel is thicker than the others. And one thing I did forget was on the pump, the sealing rings. They have a hook and loop. They go just like that. All four of them. In the Transgo kit, they give you these, they say, for the uh, high rev engines racing. To use these that the metal ones won't hold up. You see how there's a bevel right there? The top ceiling ring, the bevel faces up. The bottom ceiling ring, you flip it over, it faces down. gasket make sure our holes all line up oh, we got to measure this you want your gasket on there when you do this because it adds depth to it Perfect. So what you do is you set this on here and set your height. You take this over to your pump and you flip it over and that will allow you to measure the gap between your washer bearing or whatever you have there and this and it should set your clearance where it needs to be. Clearance on almost anything is about five to twenty thousandths. And don't forget your pump o ring like I did. Pump o ring going in that groove right there. Line up our holes at the bottom down here. T 
10 millimeter bolts. Turn too much. On your old units especially, you do not want to use an impact here. They will usually just rip the threads right out. Plus you won't be able to feel if you break a ring. to lean this over because the camera's right in the way. Check our in play, make sure everything's turning. Okay. All right, the Transigo kit, we're going to put this spring in the bottom. This spring with the cone facing up. And uh, just this on top, this is gonna be fun. Right. Spring on top, retainer with the tip down, short end of the taper up towards us. Whoop, that didn't work out. Thought I heard it snap in. Let me try that again. There we go. This in. Spring. Okay, on our cover, we have this little ring right there. It faces up. Short end of the taper up again.
get a pair of dikes. Pull that pin out. Thirteen sixteenths. Remember which way your linkage is pointing. All right, there's a seal down inside of here. I'm gonna have to press that in. The early ones had an O-ring. The seal goes in with that side facing in here. The linkage seal goes with this side facing into the case. I use a baby heel bar to get it out. bit of lube all right let me go put this in Okay, we're getting pretty close to the end here, so that means probably my memory card's going to die on me before I get to finish. There's little flats on here. You line those up on your linkage and then tighten it down. Make sure it's lined up before you go start cranking down on it. You don't want to screw it up. You want to get it tight, but not so tight that you split it. I've seen it happen. All right, I put our pin back in. You don't need to drive that thing all the way in. Just put it in so that it doesn't come back out. All right. And put a couple of lineup pins. I'm trying to remember exactly where they are. It's 
It's actually this one. This one and this one over here. Alright, it helps to do this because it's easier to screw your gasket up I'm trying to line all this up at one time. You gotta line your linkage up, you gotta line your throttle linkage up. Linkage has to go there, your throttle linkage has to go in between here. Understand this doesn't even have the later bolts either. There's longer bolts and shorter bolts. The short ones go in the center along the edges here. And there were, were two of them that are supposed to be have a shoulder on them to go in these lineup holes. So I don't even have those, so I don't understand why we got a 93 car, a 90 case. And an 82 valve body and bolts and guts. And it just don't make no sense. And we got these hold down brackets for this tube that Transgo had. Normally these would not be in there. from the center out. Does. I'm going to show you how, what to do with the filter. I don't need to see me sh putting on a pan. I need to show you what to do with this governor. Alright, you got a gasket that goes on your filter. This goes over here. This goes over here. And there's three eighths that hold that on there. Uh, 
Now I didn't mention earlier. Oh, damn it! Got all excited and I missed something. Thinking of other things instead of what I should be thinking of. Um, on your output shaft, the speedometer is a part of the shaft. So there's a seven, eight, and nine tooth. I believe is all that they had. So if you want to make sure and match all that up, there's a little spring on your detent here. And it needs to be brought up. And there's a little notch on your separator plate right there. Needs to sit right there. That little deal right there is probably going to cost me being able to show you the governor. May have to wait till next week. Here's your feed holes. There's your hole for your ball. Here's your feed holes. Let's see, this is the governor we're going to use. This is the other governor. You got your feed holes here, so this is this side's going to face in. You got two Phillips head bolts that hold this on. There's a seven millimeter here. You don't need to take that off. There's no need. Well, actually there is if it's really, really nasty. I'm gonna make sure all the debris is out of there. Uh, I was finally able to get this free. It had a burr back here. I had to champ for this side. This is your inner uh, weight. Don't need to take that spring off. You wanna get that to where it's nice and free. There's different weights will cause different shift points uh, at max throttle and normal upshifts. Now we got this filter. This end goes in. You got this castle looking thing. The little tips face up. And then this little valve goes in here just like that. When you get this all together you want this thing to be and the filter came out you want this thing to be moving back and forth nice and free and then you got the feed ports there's your feed ports there this would sit on there just like that all right this governor usually fits really loose so Check balls go. Find you a rubber ball. It's pretty squishy. Usually, usually use this orange one. And you want to shave just a little bit of this off. You don't want to get too much. But you don't want to get too little. All right, that's probably enough right there. I'm going to turn this up. You want to round it in down if you can get it, if you have it. And put that down in there. Get your quarter inch steel ball, stick it on there. You don't want too much because it will split this thing in half. You get your feed ports pointing towards the front. The check ball is going to go in that slot right there. And 
there and that's going to tighten up your governor quite a bit and keep it from leaking and you got your snap ring short end of the taper is out towards you all right i don't think there's really need for you to watch me putting on the outfit shaft i mean the tail housing we got our throttle linkage it goes up here they're different ones for different years so make sure you know all these linkages are different all these rods are different all these uh, inner rods are different this manual valve is not the original manual valve uh, the transgo kit has changed it out um, I think that's about it uh, we'll see if we can finish up and if we can we can if we can't we can't see how far we can get our gasket goes on I guess while we got battery, 